It's time to introduce you to Caitlin. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is your first time stopping in and you like what you see, please subscribe and like the video. So, we're back here at the garage like normal, but today we're not focusing on the white truck. Today we're focusing on the gray truck. Um, the last video I put up, we did the brakes on it so we get our fresh PA inspection, which we are all good to go on. We got new tires, new inspection, new brakes, great. But I realize you guys don't know much about this gray truck. Haven't talked about it, haven't really done much to it. So it's time to introduce you to Caitlin. So, I'm sure you can kind of get the reference there, but uh, we'll explain more about that coming up. And first, I'm going to wash the truck so she's nice and pretty. Um, that's one thing you'll notice. Most of my trucks are usually dirty. I'm not one of these people who's a clean freak and has to have a you know pristine truck all the time. Yes, it does look a lot better when it's clean, but who's got the time to do that? I live in the country, back roads. I have a stone driveway. You know, it's just thing. I'll clean it. By the time I get out of the driveway, it'll be dirty. So I'm not one of those people that stuff's always shiny and clean. More than likely you're going to see it. It's going to be dirty. And actually, normally I wouldn't even be washing it now. But since we're going to be going over it thoroughly, I figured I'd give it a little bath. So we'll get that done and we'll get to talking about what all is done to this truck. clean it'll probably be fucking dirty in about 10 minutes but oh well it is what it is it does look uh pretty damn good when she's all cleaned up so this is a setting you guys have seen quite a few times so let's go somewhere else all right there she is start off with what the truck started life as and then we'll work up to today go over the interior the exterior and most of all the performance modifications and this truck's got a little bit of a storied history or I guess you'd say some shit like that well anyway the truck is a 2012 four-wheel drive 6.7 Cummins 68 RFE truck Laramie package pretty much the only options the truck doesn't have is like the rear TV screens the uh, navigation you know little dumb shit like that that I didn't really feel was necessary when I bought the truck so when I bought the truck there was none like it you know in our area or at least anywhere the dealer could source one so the truck actually had to be built to my specifications so yeah that was uh that was definitely a first for me actually ordering a truck so this is actually the only brand new vehicle I have ever purchased when I got the truck I told this story once before, so I won't go through the whole gamut of things. Found out had an open rear. I uh, basically told the dealer, you can have it back. And they put a posi rear in it, so now we get nice, nice double line burnouts. Because just spinning one wheel sucks. That was the only problem with the whole ordering process with the truck. Now, when I ordered the truck, I also worked it out with the dealer to get a couple things at their cost. And those things are the bumpers. I got paintable bumpers paintable grill and 
these already paint match door handles. The, uh, these actually had to be ordered through with a 1500 VIN number because on the Laramie trucks, you could only get the chrome handle with the color match here. So we put those in and I had the bumpers painted to match probably two or 3,000 miles after getting the truck and I had them put on the truck. I actually still have the chrome stuff. A buddy of mine wants them, but anyway, they're still sitting in the shed. Oh, and the other thing I got from them was this power wagon valence. As you can see, it's a little lower. Your standard valence comes down like two inches here. A lot of guys just cut it off. Well, I just opted to get the power wagon one, which to me really just, it's something nobody noticed. I don't think anybody's ever commented on it, but to me, it just makes it look that much better. So that's kind of it for what the truck was when I ordered it and all that. The truck does have 373 gears, just like the white truck. So we'll start with the interior. This is gonna be pretty quick. Oh, and I only have 48,000 miles on the truck. It just rolled over. So I haven't driven it that awful much for having it five years. And part of the reason is more than once the truck was down due to transmission issues, but we'll get in that later. Really the only interior modifications, and as you can see, it's the fine Ram or Dodge, whatever you want to say, fine Dodge leather interior with the heated and cooled seats and power rear window sunroof because sunroof in a pickup truck is fucking awesome but yeah really the only interior mods is this little thing which i got off the amazon it's pretty convenient for put your phone in got the charger and right here i have my mini max mounted in the h s overhead mount so that's really it for the interior nothing special nothing out of the ordinary so on to the exterior as you can see, and as I already said, the truck's color matched. Back in 2012, you could not order a truck like this. I believe in 2012, that was the year they came out with the Laramie Limited, which if I remember right, had the color matched bumpers, but not the color matched grill. And honestly, I didn't feel the expense of just having those better seats for the Laramie Limited, and these was worth the price. So I just did this later on my own. So. I debadged the truck a little bit. I just left the Cummins badges, so I got rid of the 2500 and heavy duty. On the back, I got rid of the four wheel drive badge. Also, I have these depot headlights, which I don't know that you can get anymore, at least for a while you couldn't, because it, there's some special package Mopar has now when you buy these trucks, like a blackout package, where you actually get these factory from Mopar. So I don't know if there's a cheap aftermarket solution for that anymore. But moving on to the back lights, the third tail light and the tail lights are all tinted except for the reverse part of the lights and the cargo storage area on the top there. These were done by RetroShop.us. Sent them out, a couple hundred bucks they did it. You know, you can do it yourself, but they do a nice job and I'm extremely happy with how they are. But once again on the tailgate, I left the Cummins badge, got rid of that 4x4 emblem. I think those emblems are gone within the first week or two I had the truck. So, the truck is also reverse leveled, which you guys have seen. And I did that just by taking those two plates and putting them on top. But we still have an overload because eventually this truck will be more of a tow vehicle for the white truck. As for wheels and tires, I currently have 305 50 20 Kumo Escas or Escas, whatever, however fuck you say it, on a 20 by 9 raceline raptor wheel i believe it's called i had nitto 420s but i decided when those were bald to switch to these kumos and the only reason for that is everybody has the nittos for looks and they are a good track tire for a street truck but i just decided to try something different i've never heard any you know buddy say anything about the kumos buddy of mine had them on his truck and he loved them now then again that was a dakota so who really gives a fuck i'm sure what you guys really want to know is what's done to the truck performance wise so we'll start at the back because originally this truck was the truck i was drag racing and it was hauled from the track off a, on a trailer at least twice and it had been on a trailer or a rollback a couple times uh, you know other than that so needless to say the truck's seen a little bit of shit so up here we have a fast 150 which I don't know how well you'll be able to see. 
and a GNR diesel sump just like on the white truck. I pretty much did that on this truck and kind of copied what I did. As you can see, I wrapped the fuel lines in that split loom just like on the white truck. And it just makes for a very clean look. The ladder bars on the white truck used to be on here, but actually they were made for this truck. That's why we had to paint them because they were originally gray. So, as you saw, we have an H&S Minimax with tuning from Ryan Milken and Hardway Performance, the same guy who does our EFI live tuning for the white truck. So, under the hood here, really it's nothing fancy. We have a sinister EGR delete, throttle valve delete. Um, I did have that grid heater delete plate on here that's in the white truck, but now we just have a standard grid heater that I did clean. The CCV has been deleted. We have a fleece coolant bypass, which is definitely needed. A ARP 425s or 2000s, I think is the other name for them. So the truck is studded. Has stainless diesel manifold with a cast wheel box Borg Warner S467-8390. <clears throat> so that was put on the truck using the Source Automotive kit, the same kit that we used on the white truck. Um, and this truck does have an EGT probe um, because at the time I was concerned about shit like that, but now I just, nah, it's just a number. And I guess the last real th little thing under the hood here is this little stainless diesel oil cap. Ah, I think it's neat, so that's why I got it. A bunch of parts were nabbed off of this truck for the white truck. Like I already said, the traction bars, or ladder bars I should say, were taken from this truck and put on the white truck. The valve springs, push rods, the 200% over injectors, the Mishimoto intercooler, they were all robbed from this truck. The Turbo Smart blow off valve is another one. They were all robbed from this truck to put on the white truck because they were no longer needed on this. We're not going to be doing that kind of shit with this truck ever again. It's never going to see the track again. You can mark my words on that. We'll get into that here in a moment. So, really, the modifications are not really that much. It's stock fuel, you know, a little bit bigger charger, but not much. I mean, the thing just spools up instantly. If you're on the highway and you whack it, yeah, it'll give a puff of black smoke, but it's not just throwing it all out there. So, there's a menagerie of other parts that were stolen from the, this truck for the white truck. And basically, that's all the 48RE swap stuff. So, this truck at one time had that 48RE in it, um, an adapter plate, uh, the flex plate, you know, the Firepunk anteater, the... Uh, 68 info box that you know allows our reverse light to work and on this truck actually allowed the um, Backup camera to work and funny little thing having mini max tuning this truck I could get the key out of whereas the white one we still hadn't figured that out so Why Put this make this a 48 RE swap truck and then put the 68 RFE in it. Well, that story goes back a ways so like I said the truck has actually been on a trailer more than once leaving the track and the reason for that is when it was stock I took it to the track with like 700 miles on it I think it ran like a 15.5 deleted it that cut like a whole second off like a 14.5 so then I put the S467 on it knowing full well kind of what I was doing well with the 467 on there even with stock fuel and no tuning adjustments you could feel the truck um, shake you know the transmission was slipping in the overdrive gears you were in fifth and sixth gave it a little pedal you could just feel it start shaking and that was the transmission slipping so i said fuck it let's take it to the track i'm gonna have it rebuilt anyway might as well see what it'll do took it to the track made a few passes i was happy with it i think it ran like a mid 13 somewhere like that i'm not sure but Anyway, my buddy says, uh, you know, it was getting toward the end of the night. But he says, well, you're going to leave after you just ran your fastest pass? I said, fuck it, I'll do one more. I ran the truck. I staged. I took off, and the truck just, like, shook, made this fucking noise. But it went down the track. All right, pull off onto the, the road there, grab my slip. And a girl made a comment about my reaction time. And I kind of, you know, laughed at it. You know, what she was saying was the reaction time was 666. Six, six. Okay, whatever. So then I go to take off and the truck just revs up. 
The girl says, what are you doing? This truck won't move. So the truck was towed to the parking lot. Eventually we got it on a rollback. After that, we got the truck up to a local transmission shop. Um, it's a pretty big name. I'm not going to say who it was because, uh, yes, I'm happy with the end result, but I'm not real happy with kind of how I was treated because I had the, when I talked to them, I said, look, here's what I got. And I'm going to drag weight race it. I was completely honest with them, told them exactly what I planned to do. This is not a problem. We can build something at a whole desk. Okay. What do you recommend? They said, our stage 468 RFE. I said, okay. Now, the 68 RFEs nowadays have come a long way from that. And this is 2013, 2014, something like that. So, I told them, I said, look, I'll give you the truck, do stage four. But if you find anything else to do, like a stage five, do it. Which they did find something else, so they did that. I'm not even sure what it is anymore. Got the truck back, and the truck felt great. Did a couple launches on the street with it after I had a little while. All right. Took it to the track. I think I made five or six passes, and I was actually staging the truck, and boom, that was it. Truck was done. So I think I still had reverse, reverse the truck up. We loaded it on a trailer, you know, a buddy come down with the trailer, we loaded it on the trailer, back up to the place it went. So what happened was I actually blew the low reverse sprag, which is the common problem with these things, but I blew a billet one, not the factory one. So, with talking to them, my tuner, you know, they kind of said, well, you just got to launch a little softer. Uh, if you're drag racing, you can't be doing that. So, pretty much, it told, pretty much at that point, I said, no more drag racing the 68 RFE because it's going to be an expensive proposition to do it. Another thing I did that I've never heard of anybody else doing, I'm sure it's happened, but I twisted the spines on the output shaft a little bit. And I'll show you that when we go back to the garage. Yeah, like I said, it's not something that anybody else that I know of has done. Not that the truck was even making all that much horsepower. I mean, you figure it just had a bigger turbo on it. The updated tuning hadn't even arrived yet to give it the, you know, take full advantage of that. So, after spending six or eight months, you know, just driving the truck and I really wanted to, you know, put more power down. You know, I'd gotten bit by that horsepower bug and, yeah, I decided, fuck it, we're going to do a 48 RE swap. So what I did was a buddy of mine wanted to do a 5600 swap in his truck. Okay. I said, you give me all your shit, I'll buy all that shit. Okay. And, and the trans was built at that time. So went and he had actually gotten a truck. You know, it was a used truck that had all this shit done to it and all that. Anyhow, I bought him a manual transmission swap. We did that. Then I put this 48 RE in this truck. I think I actually took the trans apart put some clutches in it just you know re-clutch the whole thing not that i know a whole lot about them about them but i just you know put new clutches in it made sure all the clearances were right well one more on my way to work i decide hell i'm gonna give this thing hell broke the input or i broke the billet intermediate shaft so <sighs> i took it all apart said what the fuck i don't even know how this happened this is beyond me i need to get somebody involved when I hooked up with Brian Wilson in Rising Sun, Maryland. He's the one who currently built the, tra built the transmission. And I told him what I had, showed him what I got. He said, look, I'll clean it all up and I'll tell you what I think, give you an estimate, what we need to replace, all that. I said, all right, clean it all up. I said, do it. So put the trans together, new TCS billet intermediate shaft. I actually upgraded to the fat output shaft for the 48RE, the billet one and we went with a TCS billet input shaft. Well, I took it to the track a couple times, had some issues with it, you know, fueling wise and all that. Well, then I was out in the roads and I said, eh, launch, let's launch the truck. So I launched the truck and yeah, ba-boom, coasted to a stop, I broke that input shaft. What the fuck? So I took it back to him, he's like, I don't know how you're doing this. Um, I said, I guess I'm just that hard on it. So we put a Sonics input shaft in it. Needless to say, hunting season, uh, first or second Saturday of deer hunting in PA here, I was heading off to go hunt with my dad and my uncle and them. Snapped the Sonics input shaft. Took off at a stop sign, and I just laid into it, and boom, same thing, coast to stop. So at that point, I you know, took it to Brian, and he said, you know, there's something going on here we're not seeing. So, come to find out, we figured out that the adapter plate I had that the 
one dowel, the hole was kind of oblonged. So we ended up getting another adapter plate and figured that was probably our problem. We were side loading the shaft. So I actually didn't have them rebuild it right away. I was making up my mind and I decided to go with a fat input shaft from Phil down at DPC who does my torque converter. He's the same guy, you know, it's the same shit the fire pump guys use and like John Muldoon, it's the same stuff. But doing that, I had to upgrade to a quad disc torque converter. So, got the trans rebuilt. It sat in the garage for a while and I looked at trucks and I was trying to decide what to do. Well, that's when we found a white truck. So the 68, the built 68 RFE went back in the gray truck and it is what it is today. I know that's a real long story about the truck, but yeah, the truck was a 68 truck. Then it was a 48 truck. Now it's a 68 truck. So her name was Helen before because I give all my trucks girls names. Now her name's Caitlin because, well, she's got trans issues. So that's my little joke of her name and all that shit, but that's the truck. My future plans for the truck really aren't that much. Eventually I want to get a trailer because we're going to get to a point where we're probably going to have to trailer the white truck to the track and probably should be anymore because it's a fucking time bomb like I've told you before. So that's the gray truck, which I will now refer to as Caitlin. And you guys will know what that means. If we get new subscribers, they're just going to have to figure it out. Here are the parts that I've broken transmission wise in the truck. This is our 68 RFE output shaft. Here's our billet sprag. As you can see, it is fucking destroyed. Also, I don't know if you'll be able to see on video that the splines splines do have a little bit of a twist to them yeah it's not that awful much but there is a twist there but one reason you don't see an aftermarket output shaft for these trucks first off nobody uses them anymore for making horsepower but as you can see the planetary and the output shaft are all one piece they when i broke this i think they actually had to get one special for mopar so it took a while to get my truck back here is the billet intermediate shaft i broke no idea what make it is. Um, my transmission guy said he'd never seen one with an Allen head cap screw in the end of it like that. And he wasn't sure what make it was. The way he said it, uh, he just knew it was not a TCS Canada shaft. So on to the input shafts. As you can see, this one broke the snout off the pump stator. So that actually should be in there like that. but we're two pieces so here's the input shaft itself this is the tcs canada billet input shaft as you can see it's got some rub marks and he actually showed me on the lathe that this thing has a whole lot of run out to it on the lathe it's not straight at all it's kind of bent but there's a big let me see if i can find it it's a big crack down the whole shaft and the some splines are completely twisted the fuck so move on to the sonics input shaft so as you can see it broke the pump stator in a different location but here's another input shaft that's completely fucked so both times i did this the tip of the input shaft was stuck in the torque converter so i had to send that down to fill at dpc he had to cut clean it and rebuild it when they broke this one I think his voicemail said something along, yeah, you uh, destroyed everything inside of that, that torque converter. We had to go through it 100% and redo it. So that is a billet triple disc torque converter that was in that truck. All right, so that's all the performance, the interior, the exterior of the truck. The truck has been in a couple car accidents. Um, I actually got rear-ended in the truck. The bed actually even touched the cab. It was fucking terrible. Needed a new front bumper, new front grill, needed a headlight, uh, rear bumper, needed a fender. It just a whole list of shit. But it was some jerk off, one paying attention, ran into me, well, ran into a car, which that car hit me, pushed me off to the side of the road. It, it was a whole thing. And then this spring, I hit a deer, which took out the front bumper and the AC condenser. So I got that fixed. Peach Bottom Auto Body in Peach Bottom PA. They've done all the body work on the truck. They've been great to me. Um, 
they're very honest guys. They'll tell you exactly how it is. And like they told me, a little hint for you guys, if you ever get in a car accident, you have the insurance company come look at it, whether it's your insurance or your, you know, whoever hit you's insurance, take it to the body shop. That way they can point out all the shit that they're not going to be able to see. You know, the body shop can take the bumpers off, say, hey, you got structural damage, all that. Actually, that was the other thing with the gray truck when I got rear-ended. The back part of the frame was actually kinked in together because it bent the hitch down, and the hitch actually slides over the frame rails. So, those guys are great. I highly recommend them, and they're big Mopar guys. I hope you enjoyed hearing about that truck. I know a lot of you are asking to know more about it. You guys kind of just see it in the background and maybe do a little something to it here and there, but... That's the gray truck, officially known as Caitlin. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please get out in the garage, get to working on your truck.